So basically I had this scythe. Had a scythe. Not anymore though. I needed to make a new one and Herder in my brain was like, wouldn't it be cool if it was super big and expensive and you were swinging it around really fast? How could this go wrong? So before I could think rationally about it too hard, I bought the first couple of things I'd need for it. I was in such a hurry, in fact, that I didn't realize the first hurdle of this project would be getting the materials into my apartment. I attempted to lean the PVC pipe against the foundation of my building so I could reach it from my balcony, but that was too short, so I tried leaning it from the stairs instead. Okay... Fuck. My roommate wasn't home, but I eventually got it up through a combination of luck and throwing it at my balcony like a javelin. After I did, I had to wipe it down because it was pretty filthy, though I'm not sure if it was because of how many times it ended up in the dirt or because I bought it like that. I cut it into some pieces that I already measured out sizes for ahead of time, so I'll put those up. Hopefully you can read it. If it can't, well, sucks to suck. So I printed out a two scale picture of the scythe on like 80 pieces of paper and stapled them together one by one. This is around when I finalized my plan. I would make three layers using the green EVA foam I bought as the inner thicker layer for the blade and cover the outside with two smaller panels to create the black part of the scythe that I would mount LEDs on. After it was all stapled together, I realized the tip was cut off. Figuring out I would need to meticulously measure what I had so the last two pages were sized correctly or print the whole thing out again, I decided math is for nerds and guessed. Skipping ahead a bit, definitely not because I forgot to record it, I made a copy of just the black part of the pattern for the outer layers, so I took some measurements and got to work. The finished pattern looked like this, but there was a bit of a problem when I went to line it up with the PVC pipe. Yeah, so I think I'm just gonna have to kind of cut this like right here in the middle. With that set out, I began to cut the foam panels and sand them. I don't want to complain too much, but I drastically underestimated how much sanding this project would take. Like, I probably spent almost 20 hours sanding this thing between sandpaper and dremeling if I had to guess. If it wasn't for 4 hour Family Guy compilations to drown out the demons, I probably would have just not sanded it. I realized after rounding out the edges that the pipe was too thick, and that I would need to carve out the insides of the outer panel so everything would fit, and you know what that means. Oh yeah, and taking a break from cutting out the head just for a second, I uh, put some EVA foam clay around the exposed PVC junctions just to hide them. I put some tape on the center head to prepare for painting. I exclusively covered it in plastic dip since it's my preferred primer for EVA foam and it's black anyway. Afterwards, I filled in the exposed gaps with EVA foam clay and once that dried, you guessed it! Sanding it, I took off some of the plastic tip that I had put on, so after a few cycles of sanding down the clay, adding more, and letting it dry, I added one more layer of plastic tip. After that was done, I just needed to take off the tape, which was way more of a pain in the ass than I thought it would be, actually. After a while, though, the head was done, and I just needed to finish the rest of the site. All that was really left to do was to use the rest of my PVC pipe for the handle and get ready to perform. While I was practicing, this part kept breaking under the size zone weight, so it got to the point where I got tired of replacing it and drastically overcompensated. This is a lathe, and I used it to create a metal cylinder which I placed inside the scythe to stop it from breaking. For the lighting, I just used some good, old-fashioned, cheap Chinese electronics. 
It cut a hole in the side of one of the panels so I could shove a battery pack in there without thinking about how to secure it, so I hot glued Velcro to the side, which worked way better than it reasonably should have. I'm not sure if the performance went as well as last year, since the scythe being more than three times heavier than its previous iteration may have hindered my movement a bit, but it did not explode this time, which is an improvement regardless. After the show, I went back and added some details. More EVA foam clay, a 3D printed tip for the head of the scythe, and this bottom part, which I didn't forget to record making. I made the hole in the 3D print too small for the pipe, so I decided to glue it to the top of the scythe. Let's check in and see how that's going. Ah, I see. So at 1am the day before the photo shoot, I was pacing around my apartment trying to find any way to solve it, which activated my primal tool making instincts. Look at how well this shit holds, I can swing it around it, I can even hold it by the tip. Very tired from celebrating my undeserved victory and needing to wake up for the shoot in about 6 hours, I went to bed. And here we are, the pictures came out pretty good and with the scythe almost 10 feet in total, I really like the sense of scale it gave the costume. I have at least one more of these coming next month, so if you like this, either subscribe here, follow my Twitter, or Blue Sky. I'll post there when it's finished. Thanks for watching.